All right, Clemson Nation, back with another video on the 2023 recruiting class. I finished up the offensive side of the ball, QB, every position. Definitely go check those out. Give them a thumbs up, comment. Also, subscribe to the channel. It's free. It really helps the channel grow. I would greatly appreciate it. I want to continue making more and more content, and obviously being able to monetize this channel would motivate me to do that on a more regular basis. So please, uh, subscribe to the channel. It's free. All right. Uh, we're done with the offense now. We're going to move on to defense, and I'm going to begin with the defensive ends. We signed three guys, Tamari and TJ Parker. David Ojebwe is how you pronounce his last name. And then A.J. Hoffler. Going into this class, I think the coaches believed that they were going to lose four defensive ends. Miles Murphy was definitely going to go pro. K.J. Henry, fifth year. Xavier Thomas, fifth year. Justin Maskell, fifth year. So because of that, I feel like the coaches put an emphasis on pursuing guys that were going to be physically ready to contribute. Sometimes when you bring in a kid out of high school, they're just not ready to go. They need a year to dedicate in the weight room just to get physically adjusted to the college ball uh, game. And, uh, the three guys we got, they're all ready to go. Physically, they can already compete at this level. And uh, all three we, we got, they're all physically gifted physically strong, powerful, athletic, fast, but we are returning XT and Maskell. So these guys, they're almost exclusively going to be battling for that second team spot. We were going to be in a pretty uh, big problem heading in if we had lost XT and Maskell. We probably would have had to rely on all three of these guys to contribute. Fortunately, getting two of them back, there's going to be a battle for that, that second team spot. And honestly, depth, the defensive end, it clearly took a big hit. There's no denying that the depth isn't going to be as good as it has been. I mean, we've had those four guys for the last three seasons, and now two of them are gone. You know, so if you look at the depth at defensive end, we return fifth-year guy Greg Williams, former linebacker out of high school, three-star recruit. He's played sparingly. You know, is he going to be a guy that really turns on as a fifth-year senior? I don't know. I mean, I can think of a guy like Kevin Dodd in the past that his fifth year, he went from pretty much uh, a non-factor to breaking out in his fifth year, ultimately becoming a second round draft pick and playing for a team that, that lost in the championship to Alabama. After that, we got third year guys, Kay Denhoff and Zaire Patterson. All of these third year recruits are a little bit different because their senior years, they missed COVID. They missed their senior years because of COVID. And so there's no telling how much time they missed in the weight room. And so a lot of these guys really needed an extra year to develop because they just missed so much time. Imagine going an entire year without playing football and all of a sudden you're in college. That's just such a difficult adjustment for anybody to make. But they're in year three now or almost like year two in a sense. Both of them redshirted, so both of them had that power hour as freshmen, so they physically have gotten adjusted to the game of football now at the college level. And so I'm really excited to see what those two guys can do. Four stars, highly rated guys, highly recruited guys, Kate Denhoff, Zaire Patterson, these are the guys that we need to watch out for coming up in the spring. After them, second year guy, Jaheen Lawson. He definitely had to physically get ready coming out of Daniel, younger brother of Shaq Lawson. If he can be half as good as his brother, he can hopefully become a pretty good player. But if I'm being honest, the only reason Clemson offered him is because we lost a defensive end commit to Alabama. So, I don't know. Um, all of these guys, Greg Williams played sparingly. I've seen Denhoff play in a couple of games in mop-up duty. I believe Jaheim Lawson got in a couple snaps this year, again, in mop-up duty. I don't think I've seen Zaire Patterson have a single snap. So... Who knows what happens? Greg Williams, he's never flashed at me in the time that he's gotten. Denhoff, Patterson, the talent's there. They just got to put it all together. And Lawson, to me, I don't know if he'll ever be a guy that will really contribute at a high level for us. So that means, in my opinion, there's an opportunity for these three signees to see immediate play in town. Now, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they found their way into that too deep. They're incredibly talented. They have the physicality to do it. But for me, I'm hoping that Denhoff and Patterson for sure take that next step in their development. I really want those guys to be in that second group. And I'm really excited that we got XT back. I mean, this guy can have a massive year if he manages to stay healthy. I feel like he's been hurt 
our last three seasons. When was the last time we've seen him fully healthy? The talent, unquestioned, has always been there. The elite edge rushing ability that he has, we haven't seen that really since Vic Beasley. I don't even remember the last time we had a guy get double digit sacks in a season. It might have been Vic Beasley or maybe even Shaq Lawson, I'm not sure. But XT can definitely be that guy. I'm looking for him in his sixth year. If he can really stay healthy, his body's at its peak, he should be a guy that can get double digit sacks for us. And then Mask will come back. You know, this was big for us, six year guy. He's never been a flashy player to me. He's never jumped off at me. I think he's just like an average starter at the collegiate level. But honestly, we really need that at this point. Six year guy, so, you know, how many mistakes is he gonna make? Not many. Is he really gonna have a double digit sack season? I doubt it. Is he gonna make explosive plays for us? I don't think so. But he's a guy that we can definitely win with for sure. Um, after that, again, Dan Hoff, Zaire Patterson, those two guys, spring practice, that's where I'm really gonna look at. I'm, I'm excited to see how they develop. I really want them to be in that second group. And also TJ Parker, who we're gonna get ready to go into. He's already on campus, highly rated, high rated recruit, um, probably the highest rated defensive end we've gotten in a few years, at least since Miles Murphy. So those three guys, their development this spring is going to be massive. Weight room, Lemansky Hall in practice. He's got to get these guys ready because of the depth behind almost no experience. And so out of all the positions on the team, you know, defensive end is honestly the one I'm worried most about. I love our two starters, but you know, after that, I don't know. XT, Maskell, they got to stay healthy. Losing one of these guys, I mean, it's scary. We're going to be relying on nothing but inexperience after them. And if this team wants to return to the playoffs, the health of Xavier Thomas is of the utmost importance. But with that said, we're going to look at the tape. These three signees, we're going to see what they got. As always, we're going to start with the highest rated guy, TJ Parker out of Alabama, four-star player, top 50 player, top 10 defensive lineman for his class. So we're looking at one of the highest rated, highest sought after defensive line prospects in the entire country. And what I love about TJ Parker is he is elite in both the pass and the run. You can see on that play, dips his shoulder, bends around the edge, explosive off the ball, beats the guy with speed, and he can really win both ways. So you have a lot of guys that really just rely on their speed to win. Then you have guys that are gonna lie just on their power to win. He can do both. He can win with speed and with power. And you can see that in the film. What I also love about him is this, setting the edge right here. So this is a guy that not only can be great in the passing game, but also great in the running game. Like I said, can beat you with power. We've seen him beat speed. Now there was the power right there. Again, playing the run very, very well. Explosive athlete. Another explosive athlete down the line. Yeah, this kid can really, really play. To me, he's going to be a five edge rusher for us. Again, dips his shoulder, bends, gets around the edge. This is high level stuff. Inside move. Again, defeating against the run. It's very rare to see guys that have the combination of the ability to be an elite edge rusher and also play against a run. He's clearly got that. That's obviously why of our three defensive end commits, he's the highest rated of them. I really love what I see on tape. I know we came on late to get this kid, but man, am I glad we got him because to me, he can step in and play instantly for us. He's a guy that can really push that 2D. Again, just sits well in there, finishes the play. Another one, you can see that. Again, run fit, doesn't let the guy reach him, gets inside, makes a tackle. Another one, wins with power right there, just bull rushes the, the offensive tackle. Good use of his hands right there to get the offense lineman off of him. I mean, this kid has just elite written all over him. Coming back to make the play, you're going to see that theme with all three of these guys. They have elite motors, relentless effort. Again, just making more and more plays. This one just explodes down line scrimmage. Yeah, so you can see all that on tape. Kid is unbelievably athletic. You know, I believe he can be a, just an elite edge rusher, but also can play against a run at a high level. Think uh, Miles Murphy, honestly. Maybe a little bit more advanced as a pass rusher than Miles, um, but he can he can do both. You know, Murphy was a guy that could rush the passer. Murphy was a guy uh, that could um, also uh, play the run very well. 
In fact, he honestly was great against the run. I don't even think he had a double-digit sack season. But also what I love about T.J. Parker is I think he has the athletic enough ability to drop in coverage, and we see that with defensive ends all the time. I've seen Miles Murphy, K.J. Henry, Xavier Thomas drop into coverage a lot under Brent Venables, and now Wes Goodwin. He can definitely play well in space, quickness to close on the perimeter, and you can see that on the film just his explosive off the ball. You can see him get quickness getting down the line of scrimmage. So elite edge rushing ability, has a chance to be great in the running game. But of the three signings that we got, to me, he has the best chance for immediate playing time. He's on campus already, so that's that's going to help. He's in that college weight room right now. His adjustment is going to be a lot faster than David Ojebwe and A.J. Hoffler. You know, long-term potential for this kid is definitely NFL. High draft pick, in my opinion. He could play his way into a first-round draft pick. You know, but to me, if he plays the way he does, lives up to his potential, he's not leaving outside of the third round. He's a guy that's going to be a high-end NFL draft pick when it's all said and done. So uh, after that, David Ojebwe from the D.C. area. I believe he went to the same school that Trey Williams went to. What I love about this kid, I mean, physically ready to go. And I've mentioned that already. But when you see this kid's, like, arms, they're insane. Like, this kid's development muscle-wise it's just insane for a kid his age i believe he's already benching over 400 pounds which is ridiculous for someone in high school i mean we're almost talking about twice his body weight but also to to carry that athleticism lifting that much is just ridiculous so like i said they went after guys that were physically ready to go and david ojebwe is definitely that guy i think he's the most physically ready of all the three that we got he's probably a guy that can add a lot to his frame 250, 260, would love to see that. Shrink number is going to be off the charts. Ridiculous athleticism. And so, for him, the physicality is there. You can see that uh, on that first play. For, for him, everything is going to be about technique. Good job pulling the defender, snapping the uh, offensive lineman down and getting around him. For him, everything is going to be, can he develop technically? because he just relies on his just unbelievable athleticism at the high school level. Effort to come back and get the quarterback right there. This guy, again, this is Wes Goodwin, Brent Vimmel's right there. Those little uh, stunts that we do inside, we see our defensive ends doing that all the time. Winning with power right there. Good use of his hands. Off the ball fighting, he ends up getting reached right here and, and still making the play. So he's got to do a little bit better in the run fit. You don't want to get reached right there by a college offensive lineman. You got to keep that outside contain. You got to be more explosive off the ball. Again, all, all this stuff to me is technical aspects. Not getting reached right there, if firing, f firing faster off the ball. These are little technical details that we need to get a little bit better at. Straight bull rush. I don't even see a pass rush move in that play. So again, technique has to be a big role. He really relied on his athleticism and strength uh, in high school. He's got to get better in technical aspect. But, you know, you get a kid like this, freak athlete, and you can teach them the technique, and they can go a long way with that effort right there, toughness, fighting off a few blocks right there. This is one of his better plays. He kind of slows up right there. He needs to really do a good job of finishing through plays. It's almost like he's a little timid. A little timid off the ball right here, but when he's going, he's explosive, right? So for him, honestly, the physicality is there. He's a guy that can play the five. He can play the four, head up on the tackle. He can also play the four-eye technique inside the tackle. He can do a lot of different things. He's diverse. He can play weak side, strong side, defensive end. And I think the coach is going to use him in a lot of different ways. He still has a lot to work on, in my opinion. I don't think he'll ever be this elite edge rusher, but I think he has the ability to be insane in the run game. Right, Miles Murphy was one of the better run defenders in college football. This kid has the potential to be a great rush defender just like that. And so hopefully, uh, technique-wise, he develops. Because of this, he's also not an early enrollee. If Denhoff and Patterson really take that next set, Greg Williams is there as well. This guy might be in for a redshirt year. Just to get that technique down, 
or we might have to rely on him if injuries come. But, you know, long-term potential for the NFL is definitely there. The size, athleticism, his strength numbers, again, off the charts. This kid has a bright future. Uh, once he works hard, and apparently all indications are that he's a grinder. He's, he's a kid that's very serious and goes to work. So, you know, they got a, a serious kid, physical kid, athletic kid, powerful kid. And uh, once he puts it all together, technique-wise, he could be a great player. NFL future draft pick for sure. Uh, all of the tools are there, and uh, I can't wait to see how he develops. So, on to uh, AJ Hoffler, another guy physically ready to go, 6'5", 240. I love his tape. I think this kid plays with relentless effort. You're going to see that on tape. It's going to flash on that first play, and you really need that from your defensive ends. It's such a demanding position in football now. Offenses are playing sideline to sideline. So defensive ends really have to have to be able to move, really have to be able to run, change directions quickly, give effort to chase down people. And we see that from our defensive linemen a lot. Christian Wilkins, Tyler Davis, these two guys were the epitome of effort at defensive line. You know, Miles Murphy, KJ Henry, they, they, these guys give max effort all the time. And I think that's what AJ Huffler is, max effort guy. We can see it definitely on tape. First play, he's gonna defeat not only the offense lineman with speed, power to run over the running back, get up and still finishing, gets to pick six for his teammate. That's just highly impressive to defeat the offensive tackle, then completely bully the running back. Again, another just explosive off the ball. I really, really love this kid. I think he's got a chance to be great, great. His edge rushing ability to me is, is elite right now. He can definitely be that next elite edge rusher for us. He's a guy that's primarily going to play that five technique. I think he needs to get better in the running game, but you can just see the explosiveness, the quickness. This guy probably runs like in the four, six range as a defensive end, which is incredibly fast, especially at six, five. He's probably a guy that's going to be close to 250 or 260. This is what I'm talking about in the running game. He's got to be able to do a better job of setting the edge right there. College offense linemen are just a lot better than that. And so they'll reach you and get around you. But Again, pass rushing ability, it's there. Just, I mean, just explosive off the ball. You can totally see the difference between his get off and Ojebwe's get off. It's just a different type of speed. He might be a little bit slower from the snap, almost like he's still in his stance a little bit. But once he gets moving, it's explosive. Great first step. And finishing that quarterback, that's got to hurt really bad. But, you know. Unbelievable talent. He's a kid that I really like. Uh, can't wait to see what he does. That frame that he's got, tall, definitely adds some weight. He's a guy that can be really, really good. The speed is there. The explosive off the ball is there. Great first step. He's going to have to develop the better techniques than pass rushing, but everyone does. But once he does, edge rush ability, it's there. Uh, he can play the run in high school, but to me, he's got to get better than that to be good in college. But given his size, athleticism, the motor, you can just see it on tape. This kid plays full speed virtually every play. All the tools to be another NFL player. That's the theme of all three of these defensive ends that we got. Long-term potential. I definitely see NFL players out of all three of them. If they grind and they work hard and they stick with it, all three of them got a chance to be special. And so, love the three signings that we got. Lamancy Hall, great job in this class. And honestly, this was an important class for him because he was quietly struggling as a recruiter. I mean, CJ Spiller gets a lot of criticism right now as a recruiter. Tyler Grisham's getting a lot of criticism. Lemansky Hall is kind of going under the radar for that kind of criticism. If you look at the guys that he signed, I mean, Denoff, Patterson, if neither one of those guys really have a big year, take that next step. I mean, it, it could be just simple enough to say that we missed on these guys, that, that they were maybe a little bit overrated. I mean, year three, Highly rated recruit that they were. I don't know. Then to lose the defensive end commit to Alabama last year and end up with Jaheim Lawson. Again, a low-level three-star recruit. Who knows? Hopefully he can become a great player for us. But those all three, those are his guys. And uh, neither one of them, none of them have played uh, any significant snaps yet. And we'll see what happens this year. So this class was really important for him. And so, you know, based off the tape, I think we signed three guys long-term huge potential so i think props to lansky hall great class for him All right um 
we'll see what happens with 2024, but 2023, really good class. Love the signees. And TJ Parker, to me, has more long-term uh, potential, more high-end potential. I believe he can play the, the, he can be an elite edge rusher and also play the run very, very well. Ojebwe, I think, to me, probably has the most to work on, but physically, he's the most ready to go. And AJ Hoffler, I think, elite edge rushing ability. Definitely, he's going to have to get better in the running game. You know, he's almost the exact opposite of Ojebwe. Ojebwe is going to be great in the run, but has to work on his pass rush technique, you know. Uh, but love all three of them. Again, big class for us. But this concludes this video. Next video is going to be on defensive tackles. I can't wait to make that one. The three guys that we signed at defensive tackle, all, all monsters, especially Peter Woods, who I believe is just the best overall player in the 2023 class, in my opinion. Can't wait to make that video. Those three dudes, I'm telling you, just freaks of nature. So be on the lookout for that one. If you like this video, again, thumbs up, comment, and I'll see you on the next one. Go Tigers.